What's going on guys, MV Astro here, back at it with another video, here with said Hendo. Yo, baby. But before we get started with this video, I'd like to give a huge thanks to T-Motor for always supplying us with these motors. That way we could do these tests for you guys, so. Really appreciate you In guys. fact, we actually got to meet Anki and Vivian from T-Motor at the yeah. Riot International Open. It was actually very nice to meet really them. It was really nice to meet those so. guys. Really appreciate everything you do. Keep up the good work, and thanks for the support. Also like to mention FPV Fight Club. Mike, oh, yeah, thank you guys. Man, you do a great job. Keep it coming. Also, like to uh, thank Jim Fan, man. They've yeah, been fam. taking care of us. They've been taking care of us uh, in giving us a few props here and there, bringing out great product. That's something that all of us get to enjoy. So we really appreciate those guys. Just keep it going, man. Thanks. So with that, guys, let's go ahead and go back home and look at the specs on the new F60 V3s. Let's do it. So here we have the F60 V3. This is the newest member to the F Series family from T Motor. As you can tell, the design looks very, very familiar, which I personally really like. So for those people that do not know, this here is the F40 V3. As you can tell at a glance, they look very, very similar, but there is actually differences between the two. Uh, the F60 V3 comes in at a 2207. This particular version here is a 2500 KV. We'll also be testing the 2750 KVs later on this video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. But like I said, this is a 22.0 size motor compared to the F40 V3s, which are a 23.0 size motor, which means the F60 V3s are slightly taller in height, but are slightly smaller in diameter as this is a 23 size motor compared to a 22 size motor. But let's actually go ahead and compare the weight between a few motors I have here. Let's start off with the F60 V3s, which are coming in at 37.3 grams. Let's go ahead and put the F60 Pros right here. Those are coming in at 37.9, so about half a gram heavier than the F40. I'm sorry, the F60 V3. Let's go ahead and put the F40 V3 on there. 3.5 grams, so about a three gram difference between the F40 V3 and the F60 V3. One thing I really like that they did with the F60 V3 is that they ended up using the same design bell as the F40 V3s. Which, in my opinion, is is uh, one of my favorite things from the new V3 uh, series motors. But let's actually go ahead and look at the new bell design for those people that haven't seen our previous review on the F40 V3s. So, as you can tell inside, there's these little triangle shaped vents in there. That's basically to help with the circulation of the air during flight. So what that does is it cools down your motor temperature and in fact from my experience from flying the pro series motors compared to the v3s they do run a lot cooler than the pros did i really enjoy the new design and the main reason is because they're just so damn durable i have not even broken an f40 v3 so i'm expecting the same durability with the f60s v3s one thing i don't like that they did i took the c-clip off that way i could show you guys the bell but they kept the same C-clip here on the F60 V3s. Come on, T-Motor, when are you going to come out with a screw? But I'll also go ahead and put some more info on the screen for you guys. That way you guys can know a little bit more about the motor, such as the material, different KVs are going to be available for you guys. But with that, let's actually go ahead and go back to the field with Seth Hendo and I, where we'll talk a little bit more about the numbers that these put out. Okay, so now that you know a little bit about the F60 V3s, I'm going to let Sid Handel tell you guys a few of the tests that we went over to gather our data. So go ahead and tell them. So check it out, guys. We've changed up our format just a little bit. We decided to go from a 250 feet run, and we brought that down to a 200 foot run. And what reason why we did that, we feel like it's a bit more efficient. We didn't really need that much distance to get these motors up to speed. And it makes it where we can control this environment a little bit more, um, just, just in our, our field. So what we're also gonna do is we're gonna go back and test some of the motors that we've done on a 250 foot run and bring that down to 200 and get some numbers for that so you guys can have that to refer back to. Also, we decided to do um, another efficient type of run, figuring out the efficiency of these motors. And we did a, did a track, we just run it until we uh, can't run anymore, it falls out of the sky. And we did that on two different KV motors. And we also decided to use two different props this time also. We're trying to mix it up a little bit, have a little bit more data for you guys to uh, mull over and, and kind of see how you feel about it. Um, so with that being said, 
Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Ivan. We're gonna talk about these numbers. All right, so let's actually go ahead and display the numbers that we got on our first test, which was the drag race from point A to point B and back. So I'll go ahead and put those numbers up on the screen for you guys. And as you can see, I'm gonna compare both the 2500 and the 2750 KV F60V3s. So first off, let's go ahead and talk about the 2500 KVs. So as you can see, uh, Set Hando and I both ran 10 times each with each KV motor. And as you can tell, the average time for both of us was 4.68 seconds on my runs with the 2500s and with the 2500s, uh, set handle also got a 468 so we tied up on the drag race and now let's compare those numbers to the 2750s and as you can tell they are slightly lower with the 2750 kvs coming in at like what eight hundredths of a second faster than the 2500 kvs and that just kind of shows you that the 2750 kvs on average were slightly faster even though this may not seem like a huge gap difference between the two, think about it like this. When you're racing and especially doing some heads up racing, all these little milliseconds count. So imagine if you, you have a heads up race and it's like first to four laps on a specific track. Multiply the 800 of a second by four, that adds up to be over about two seconds, right? Or about a, over a, a second and a half. So you want all the milliseconds and all that time to help you guys out win the race because I had races where I barely lost them by like not even half a second by you remember at the few world like few milliseconds <laughs> apart um, but um, what do you got to say about these numbers that and oh, you know oh, I was just touch. very surprised uh, because ultimately when you go we're basically going head to head, to head on this. Uh, we were challenging one another, let's just be honest. I mean, every time we got on the line, we wanted to start very well and we wanted to finish very well. So we were pushing for each one of these runs to do the very best we could and to get the most out of it and also to show you guys information about the motors in a real world situation, which is what we like to do. And um, to see these motors put down these types of numbers, I was, I was kind of like, well, okay, all right, this is not, it's not horrible, it's not, you know, it's not yeah. F40 Pro range, <laughs> but I mean, it's, they were good. We, I don't normally fly a 2207 size yeah, motor. Yeah, this is our very first time flying. This is really our first time flying a 2207. And actually testing it out for the channel. Exactly. And uh, my main thoughts, whenever we were doing this, of course, we do the drag race to test like the torque around the back flag and then right off the launch. And I really, really like the explosiveness I was getting out of the 2750s compared to the 25s. Yeah. The 2500 kV honestly felt, it felt fast, but they didn't feel anything like crazy fast. The 2750s actually had that nice explosiveness coming right out of the launch. And by the way, we were actually using the Pro Launch right here. Uh, for all our tests uh, so we this thing gets you like 95% of the time to have like nearly perfect takeoff so it was very nice having the um, pro launch and we'll actually be using it on all our tests let's yeah. actually go ahead and move on to the our efficiency test yeah. okay so for our efficiency test we tested each uh, KV motor four times so the 2500 kV was tested with two different kind of props we ran the 5152 twice and then the 5040 wind dancer twice as well and whenever we were doing these tests we had a gopro on which adds about 70 to 80 grams more and this was on a 1500 milliamp battery and the reason we decided to use two different kinds of props was because the 5152 is a very very heavy and aggressive prop so we added the 5040 wind dancer which is a much lighter and less aggressive prop that way we could tell a difference between an efficiency with a heavy more aggressive prop and a light less aggressive prop and these are the numbers that we got for them so with the 2500 kvs on a 5152 we averaged out about two minutes and one seconds on both runs yeah. and which was pretty decent uh, and then once we uh, got those numbers, we tried out the wind answers and our predictions were very surprisingly because we thought that we were actually going to get better efficiency with the 5040 wind dancers but they actually ended up being the exact same so on the all four exact runs same on all four runs <laughs> so on all four runs I mean, within a few hundredths of a second yeah. 
but with awful runs we ran a two minutes and one seconds on awful runs with the 2500 kvs but then but we then, tried out the 2750s and this is where it was a surprise it got really weird then because obviously the first thing you think of whenever you think of a higher kv motor you think about inefficiency mm -hmm. and from our test our previous says we also tested inefficiency on 2750s kv high or high kv motors and they ended up being inefficient yeah. Yeah. but i don't know what it is about these f60s it may be the the, the multi-strand wire but they actually had on average 10 seconds more flight time than the 2500 kv did 10 on seconds. both props 10 both seconds props. on both props this is no fluke we ran it mm -hmm. we did it we had the numbers spot on 10 seconds longer now Obviously, you would think, ah, 10 seconds, that's not that much, right? Uh, you know, in the big picture, you're like, ah, 10 seconds, it's not no big deal. Yes, it is. It's just as much of a big deal as racing and getting, you know, three tenths of a second faster. Exactly. It's just as much of a big deal. Being able to stay in the air longer is being able to stay in the air longer. I don't care if it's a couple of tenths of a second. So, And, and keep in mind, we are... Uh, stopping the time whenever we hit the ground so in other words the battery is completely dead mm -hmm. the overall efficiency is actually pretty good so so just think about it like this whenever you take off the gopro you're adding the 70 to 80 grams you should be able to get like over two and a half so minutes good. and of course this is flying at about 80 percent of what we're capable of doing so take that as you want it and you know what i i would take it like this you cannot assume that a any particular size motor yeah. is going to perform exactly. any particular way when it comes to efficiency. Yeah, you can assume some things with higher KV motors sometimes, and we were a little bit disappointed when we tested des Deadpool's, but and that's different. But in this situation, we tested a higher KV that actually outperformed in efficiency to a lower KV. And like motor. you said, it wasn't a fluke, dude. It did it all and, four times. And it was a faster motor. Yep. And it was a faster motor. So uh, now yeah, let's kind yeah. of talk about the overall experience with the motor and who we would recommend this motor to. So I want to ask you this question real quick. Right. So I'm one of them and I want to ask you, why should I buy the F40? I'm sorry, the F60 V3 over the F40 V3 or any other F40 Pro? Well, I would only really suggest the 2750 version of the f60 so not the 25s i wouldn't do the 25 personally i wouldn't do the 25 i probably would agree with and, you and and i i wouldn't do that for two reasons one they were faster than the 25s mm -hmm. and two they were more efficient than the 25s <laughs> yes that, which why would i get the 25s exactly right mm -hmm. the f60s um as far as over the f40s if i were to purchase that the v3s the v3s uh-huh uh -huh. I would probably purchase these for one particular thing, and that is racing, period. And I would want to put those on a lighter quad. I believe stripping the weight off of these motors would really help them perform even better. And the reason why I say that is two things. One, I feel like because they are performing on par with the F40 V3s, the 25s the, were. The 25s were? When we compare our numbers to the F40 V3s, mm -hmm. 2750s, the 2500 KV F60s were performing the same. Were performing the same. So the 2750s are performing even better. So mm -hmm. that's why I would buy these over the F40 V3s, 2750s, mm -hmm. is because of the performance is better. But here's the trick. These are heavier than the F40 V3s. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to say I had a particular frame, it was already heavy, say like the Tokyo. The Tokyo is on the heavy side. I wouldn't want to put an even heavier motor on there just to end up being the same. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that. I would say to myself, how can I change this up a little bit so I can make these perform even better than the F40 V3s? By, if I get the F60 V3s, I'm gonna put those on a lighter frame so I will get even better performance potentially mm -hmm. if I put them on a lighter frame versus putting them on a the heavy frame. Okay, so in other words, uh, you're recommending the F60 V3 2750 KV for a much lighter setup. That's right. That way I it would could compensate for the heavier motor. Exactly. Okay. Heavy motor, light frame. Even though they pref the 2750s perform very well, with the extra weight though because while i was handle it just fine yeah while i was trying um while i was running them around the track with the gopro on 
the 2750 just had so much better torque than the 2500s. I honestly don't know if I would actually recommend the 2500 kV to any hardcore racer out there, but if you are looking for a much, how should I say this, a less explosive and less, slightly less powerful motor, I would go with the 2500s, even though they seem to be less efficient um, from our test that we did today. Also, I would also put in here real quick, not to interrupt, but if you're going to run 5S, 2500 might be a really, really good option. Um, I believe that in the future, I believe that racing and other things, maybe potentially mm -hmm. even freestyling, will go to 5S and maybe even 6S. Maybe the 2500 might be a good fit for a 5S. Or the 2500s could also uh, be pretty well fitted on a light freestyle frame. Yeah. I think those would actually be very nice for that. And I believe the F60 V3s also come in a 2350 kV, mm. which we don't have and we didn't test, but I believe Double. that will be probably more for like a 6S type of build. Yeah, yeah. I love those options, those are great options. Don't forget about your options in kV. Don't assume that high kV is not is gonna be too much. It's gonna suck the juice out exactly. of my pack. Don't assume that these motors aren't that way. They really aren't. Yeah, and I will you know what? Myself, they're though. because they're taller and not as big around as a 2306 or whatever, mm -hmm. they seem to me uh, visually they seem more streamlined. And they seem more purpose fit for uh, a lighter frame, a lighter frame with skinnier, skinnier arms, arms and things like that. It looks better, it has better balance to it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. But I think all in all, we should, um, I would recommend the 2750s over the 2500s for the reasons that both said Hendo and I said. So if you guys would actually like for us to test any other motors out now that we have a set distance and set uh, test that we're gonna be doing every time they're at the same exact spot, let us know. We're actually gonna, like Seth Handel said, we, are, we will actually be running our previous motors all on this same exact distance and the same exact track. That way we can gather efficiency and that way you guys could go from video to video comparing each motor that you would guys wanna see. But comment down below which motor you guys wanna see next. Uh, but keep in mind, we have to buy these motors if we test them out. So we would really appreciate if like companies, different companies other than T-Motor would actually send us their motors for us to test. But with that, I think we pretty much covered everything and hope yep. everything that we discussed here right. would help you choose whether you wanna choose F60 V3 or not. But if you have anything else? No, that's all I got. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching our videos. Comment, like, and subscribe. Make sure you tell your buddies. See you on the next one. Peace out.